Apparently, I was wrong. Apparently, we'll see. Good things can happen. Kirsten Cinema has indicated that she will now support the IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act, the $739 billion bill that the Democrats have put forward to change a lot about the climate, about health care, about taxes, a lot of different things. Unfortunately, to get her support, the sort of things that you probably expect, considering it's Kirsten Cinema, had to happen. So they agreed to drop a $14 billion tax increase on some wealthy hedge fund managers and private equity executives that she opposes. Change the structure of a 15% minimum tax on corporations and include drought money to benefit Arizona. I would like to give her credit for including that last thing. Um, it's like her acknowledging that, oh, wait, we're supposed to pretend that this stuff is like for other people in our state. So I guess it's dry in Arizona, I hear. I don't know. I don't really spend much time there. I intern in wineries and, you know, hobnob with uh, Wall Street execs, but I hear it's pretty hot and dry. So something, something drought. Anyway, the rest of it, $14 billion on the money that these hedge fund managers make that for some reason gets to be taxed at a way lower rate than the wages you'll earn waiting tables or building houses, that's gone. The minimum tax, there will be something, but you can guarantee that the changes are gonna benefit the wealthiest people in the country. Those are the things we need to give to get the other stuff that is admittedly not bad. Now, there are things in the bill already that we don't like, even in areas that we want legislation to be passed in, like in regards to the climate. And all of this, by the way, is in advance of this weekend, where we expect there are gonna be test votes, as well as the, what do they call it? The amendment orama or whatever. The votorama. The votorama, where everybody gets to put forward uh, amendments. Most of their, them are gonna come from the Republicans, and it's gonna try to kill it. It's gonna be cute, it's not gonna work. But you should be watching out for some that the Democrats will put forward, perhaps including Kirsten Cinema, that will chip away at the good parts of this bill. But before we launch into our conversation, let's acknowledge some of the stuff in here that is good. Medicare will be allowed to start negotiating for prescription drug prices starting in 2023. There will be a $2,000 cap of the amount of money that senior patients under Medicare will have to spend out of pocket on prescription drugs. Right now, there's no cap. It could be 10,000, it could be 50,000. So that'll be capped at 2000. All vaccines for seniors will now be free. There are tax credits for the purchase of electric vehicles, which are still too expensive. This will help both for new and importantly for used EVs, there will be tax credits. And there will be a fund of, I believe, $20 billion to retrofit factories to start producing cleaner hybrid and electric vehicles. All of that in addition to emissions reductions that are undercut in a bunch of different ways in, in the bill that are incredibly frustrating. But it is expected that it will help us get most of the way towards the emission reduction goals that the US has set for 2030. Not getting to 50% lower carbon emissions than I believe we had emitted in 2005. But I think like 41 to 43% below. So it gets us a portion of the way there. and. I suppose for all of the issues that we've already acknowledged and more that we will probably add, it is more than we had last week, more than I expected we would get. Brett, what do you think about it? I just love how progressive Kirsten Cinema is in this negotiation, proving herself once again to be a champion as she ran as a progressive. She's a champion of the workaday Americans fighting to reduce tax creases on hedge fund billionaires. <laughs> I'm sure the good people of Arizona will be okay with that like drought money. But I'm glad that the thing she fought tooth and nail for was to protect hedge fund billionaires. So that the way, I mean, and when you think about how, that's how they make their money. Like the thing that they do that's the equivalent of what you, any other way that any other person with a normal job makes their money. Like an mm-hmm. agent makes a certain amount of money by negotiating a deal with people. Hedge fund managers who have their money in hedge funds, they get taxed, uh, you know, the, the capital gains rate, the 20% or whatever on the, the money that they have in there. But yeah. they also get taxed at that lower percentage on their commissions from the profits of deals. That's the carried interest loophole. It is insane. They're taxed differently, why? Because 
because capitalism and America is like this giant awesome old west casino to half of the people who live here. Um, even if they currently fancy themselves, uh, you know, as the saying goes, like temporarily disadvantaged millionaires. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that narrative is shakier than it was like 10 years ago, um, but not enough. Many Republicans are opposed to this bill. Overwhelmingly, the American public loves this bill. It's like plus 41 or something like that. Um, and even a significant portion of Republicans support it, but uh, they narrowly oppose it. Um, in any event, it's like it, the bill is, it's gonna do a lot of good things. It's also gonna do bad things and it could do more of the good things and less of the bad things. But unfortunately, some of the bad things are senators. And so this is, I guess, where we're stuck. So she insisted on um, you know, getting rid of the provision that would have limited the preferential tax treatment of that income that Brett was alluding to. Now, for now, the Democrats are adding a new 1% excise tax that companies would have to pay on the amount of stock that they purchase. So basically the way that this scheme works is when corporations get a whole bunch of money, thanks to subsidies and profit gouging and or just success in business, um, they can do a lot of stuff with that money. They can invest, they can pay their workers more. I'm th These are all things that in theory they could do, but often don't. One of the things they do is buy up their own stock, which uh, increases the price of the remaining stock because there's less of it. That's good for shareholders and you bet your ass it's good for the executives um, and people on the board there. They make tons of money doing that. Doesn't really benefit most people, certainly doesn't benefit the workers. Um, now they will have to pay a 1% excise tax. Is that that's not going to necessarily uh, you know, disincentivize them doing it, but it'll raise a little bit of money. It's part of the way the Democrats say they're still going to reduce the deficit by $300 billion over X number of years. Um, and so I guess that's something, although watch for that to be addressed in the Votorama. We'll see if it makes it through that. Um, anyway, by the way, she says, no, it's, it's, it's not that I don't wanna get rid of the carried tax thing. It's just I don't wanna do it in this case, okay? But don't worry, I'm acting in good faith. So let's do the reconciliation thing. And then she says, she's gonna work with Senator Mark Warner, Democrat of Virginia on separate legislation to address the preferential tax treatment for hedge fund income. And that would be passed separately, as in not under reconciliation, as in it would face an automatic filibuster and it would have negative 30% chance of actually succeeding. So get the hell out of here with your BS. It means it means less than nothing that she would address that in separate legislation. Right. So on that last point that you made, the the plan to carry to eliminate the carried interest loophole and various other things that she's against. Was like saying, "All right, we have a paper route. We have we're we have a car right now. Let's you know hit every house along the way. That's what everybody wants to do. We'll get the Medicare on in the first house, and then we'll toss up you know the uh, the eliminate the carried interest loophole because it's right next door. It's a very easy like let's do it all in one swoop thing. What she's arguing for is not only that she wants to do a completely different attempt at delivering this paper later, but she wants mm -hmm. to do it like on stilts, like in a very impossible <laughs> way. Like yeah. I wanted, but the way we have to do it if we do it later is I do a handstand and walk on my hands to that house and somehow throw it or I don't do it. Like she is giving herself the biggest obstacles to accomplishing that. And then yeah, for and the one person that she would accidentally do that, that she would <laughs> accidentally give herself these massive obstacles. She's it's absolutely doing that it. She up. doesn't see it. Yeah, she knows exactly what she's doing and she knows exactly where her bread is buttered. And like we'd have an itemized list of conservative interests that are giving her money. And the uptick yeah. in that completely coincided with her decision to no longer be the quirky progressive, but rather be the quirky maverick whatever that she's trying to be where she's just kowtowing to the people who line her pockets. And that is pretty much the definition of corruption. Yeah, 100%. Um, and, and technically the label that she prefers is centrist fiscal hawk. Ugh. By the way, one more random fact. According to recent FEC filings, she brought in $1.6 million in Q4 of last year, I believe. Only 34,000 of it came from donations less than $200. Like it's a rounding right. error. It's less than a rounding error. It's and it's not coming from the state. By the way, Joe Manchin, they, like, I think it was less than 1% of his funding came from West Virginia. It is ridiculous what we allow to happen in terms of campaign finance.
For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.